Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today marks the start of my journey to the 2016 Geneva Motor Show. Now normally when I go down to the Motor Show, I catch a flight, make it down there quickly because it's all about what goes on inside the exhibition halls and it's a pretty special show, one of the best ones that I think I go to or that exists anywhere around the world, especially for new supercar releases. This year though, a little bit different. I'm going to be driving down and that's kind of why I'm starting in a train station. I know that's a bit backwards, but I'm here at Paddington, so I'm taking a train out to the Ferrari offices where I'm going to be picking up the California T. So my first time driving a Ferrari California, I never drove the previous model, but driving the California T and I'm going to be taking it on this road to Geneva. We'll be jumping in the car, heading down to the Alps, checking out some awesome roads and really putting the car through its sort of paces, experiencing it and letting you know what it's all about as we make our way down towards Geneva. At Geneva, of course, we're going to be seeing all the new cars, including the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso, everything else that you're expecting to see. So stay tuned for all of that coverage but the road down there is going to be pretty exciting i'm looking forward to this so let me catch a train and make my way out to ferrari here we go arriving at ferrari maserati here we go the car for this adventure the ferrari california t this particular car, Rosso Corsa, with the black painted roof and the matching black wheels. We've even got the titanium wheel bolts on the carbon fiber center caps there, I notice, which are, of course, very, very cool. So the California T, we've got the front mid-engined V8, 560 horsepower. Obviously, it boasts some pretty impressive performance. It is a GT car. It is going to be a brilliant car to use for this journey. And with the sun glistening on it right now, it's looking rather lovely. I'm just hoping when we get down to the Alps, there are going to be some opportunities to put the roof down. Let's take a quick look at the inside. So obviously we have the Ferrari key. Unlock the car. We'll take a look in here. Well, we've got a very nice black finish. We've got the seats with the two-tone um, with the Alcantara and leather. Carbon fiber interior, steering wheel yellow rev counter i'll run over like the full specifications and all the information uh, the red stitching on the door is awesome um, of course so you're going to know about everything this first part of the video is going to be about the journey so this actually sort of starts tomorrow this evening i'm going to a ferrari event uh, with the car and maybe i'll feature a couple of clips of the day um, but the main story is going to be about the road trip tomorrow let's just start this up turn on the ignition engine start Okay, jump out. Obviously the California T raised the power with the turbocharged, twin turbocharged um, engine. But yeah, it's looking very nice. This is going to be, well, I'm going to take the car now for my first little drive. Obviously I've got to learn the car a little bit. Um, join and take you along on the adventure but we've got a couple of days driving the car so I will show you everything there is to see about this car over the coming days and today just taking it from here from the office of course this is not a not a dealership or anything um, into uh, my home um, to learn a little bit more about it and get the story started First couple of miles down then in here, and I have to say, it is remarkably comfortable. I am just driving it in automatic mode because I'm just cruising, you know? well now I'm on the motorway, so it's spectacularly unexciting, but the car does a very, very good job. Obviously, I'm familiar with everything like the uh, steering wheel controls, um, indicators on the wheel, pit speed for the uh, cruise control, so obviously, uh, I'll show you this a little bit later on or in another piece, but you set your cruise control by just toggling a little switch. But inside, very smart, very nice. There's a lovely little digital display here in the center um, that I hadn't actually seen before, which is touch sensitive on the outside to change which, which mode is showing. So I will obviously show you all of that as well. I'm obviously gonna try it with the roof down, try just about everything there is to do with this car because this is the California, named California for lovely weather, for roof down motoring, and that's where it's going to be very fun. It's a sort of GT car with the roof down, but it has ample power. It would still be fun if you took this car to a racetrack, that kind of thing. So I'm going to put it through its paces and try it in sort of every different kind of um, driving mode. I will also talk you all the way through the specification because there is a lot of it. The base price for the car is about £155,000, touch over. This car is a shade over £200,000, so it's got some very nice spec. 
come to run over and show you all the stuff like start stop um, and a lot of sort of cosmetic and luxury touches um, so it's a nice spec car it's of course very very familiar um, I haven't driven as it happened to my Ferrari FF for a while so it's kind of nice to be uh, driving for a decent distance a right hand drive Ferrari of course while I was on my recent trip to America I drove a LaFerrari and I drove an F12 Berlinetta um, and I also recently drove a 488 GTB, so now driving the California T as well as my FF is the sort of suite of Ferraris, although there is of course the GTC4 Lusso that I'm very much looking forward to driving down the line and maybe, maybe, maybe at some point I'll get an opportunity to drive the F12 TDF, which is a spectacular weapon. Tonight's event that I mentioned that I'm going to in London is the UK launch of the 488 Spider. Um, so of course again, the turbocharged engine. Um, in the mid rear engine 488 GTB, but the Spider version. So I'm looking forward to uh, having a good look around that because the launch colour is a delightful blue. It's a very, very nice colour. Um, so it'll be a nice event, especially going to the Ferrari event in this particular car, the California T. So good times ahead. I'm just going to cruise on into London and I'll catch up with you from somewhere later on. You won't believe this, but Mr. JWW's just turned up in his GT3. So I'm just driving into London, and by complete fluke coincidence, he just drives past me, and he's just had a new Sharpworks exhaust fitted. I'm not quite sure if the camera can see you, but uh, well, I can't believe that. <laughs> just driving along, and he's you're you're probably thinking like I know that Ferrari. I, was like, I definitely know that Ferrari, and then I was thinking, hold on a minute, Tim's picking up one of those cars today. This probably can't hear you, but literally I messaged James that I was picking up the uh, the California T today, and I knew he was coming in in his GT3. But what are the chances that we're on the road together? <laughs> Do the same thing. Okay, you will not believe what's going to happen. So I've just been driving along. Good morning. Well then, I didn't really do any updates yesterday, but we went in the California T to the launch party for the 488 Spider, which was of course a lovely evening, and the colour they present the car in, which is called Blue Corsa, you might have seen in my earlier videos, like from the Frankfurt Motor Show when the car was unveiled, and then at the Finale Mondiale in Italy, um, is such a lovely colour. So that was a really nice evening, great to catch up with everybody, the guys from the dealership who I bought my FF from as well, and everyone else. But now it is time to get on the road. That meant, of course, loading up the boot. So let me quickly come around and show you the California T's boot. You open it by press and hold of the unlock button. Lift it up, obviously it's a very large piece because the roof folds away in here and I will demonstrate that in due course, but no shortage of space. This obviously lowers if you want the roof down, keep it up just like most sort of convertibles, but you've got enough room for all the luggage you could possibly want and we've got tons of space spare. And you also, of course, in addition to that, oh, it has like a soft close on the boot, so you close it and then it pulls down. In addition to that, we also have a little bit of space back here as well, so we've just dropped some bags in the back. So, we are pretty much ready and set to head on out um, now in the car and start our journey today across the Alps. Well, across towards the Alps, I should say. We're not actually going to reach the mountains today. We're going to cross over on the, on the Euro Tunnel, of course, the usual way. Um, having booked a wide car space, I'll show you that when we get there. Um, and then we're going to be heading down to Raz today, Reims as we say in English, which is the old race circuit. Awesome place to stop and take some photos. And then we're going to head tonight to Troyes, which is a town sort of halfway down through France. Troyes as we say in English. Um, so that's the plan, we'll jump in the car, make our way through London. First step then, let's fire the car up, key in the ignition. Everything comes to life and then the engine start. Turbo V8 comes into life, and it's time for us to head out. Ah, oh, and as you close the door, the uh, steering wheel drops itself down, which is nice, of course, as well. Here we are at the Euro Tunnel. Now we're running about 10 minutes behind our sort of like late uh, deadline for checking it. So I'm hoping, 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 hoping that this is going to be okay. And I've logged the number plate, so fingers crossed. Identification, fingers crossed it's going to find us. Nope, that didn't work. Press to check in. Take my sunglasses off because they're getting in the way. Technology, hey? <laughs> Please wait. Oh no, it's going to need my credit card. It hasn't found our number plate. Come on, which booking is it going to offer us today? Because the train we're supposed to be on is in 20 minutes. Well, it knows my name. That's a start, but normally you need half an hour. We rather want to go in and get some lunch. Service disrupted. That's the message you never like to see. 
Um, at least it means we're not we're not missing our train. We're just service disrupted. Hang it E. So you hang this on the mirror. But uh, all is well. We will go through and head on towards the terminal um, and grab ourselves a bite to eat. And we board the Eurotunnel train again. So back in a very familiar place. Now I've explained it before, but we're in this sort of extra large wide part of the cabin where in a car like this, you don't end up curbing the wheels, which is obviously very nice and it's very high. So you get buses and vans and all sorts of things. But if you go in the main part, it can get very, very claustrophobic and you literally can guarantee that you're going to damage something. So in here, life is easy. We just drive straight through, park the car, and then we sort of magically come out the other side and we're in France. I have moved to the passenger seat for this first leg in France and driving is my co-driver for this trip, Ben, who's gonna be helping me out with a little bit and coming down to the Geneva Motor Show. So he is now at the wheel as we come to the uh, payage toll booth and this is where my little telepayage dongle comes into hand because, well, I'd have these in all of my cars now. I have actually one for each car um, for when I had them down in the south of France last year. And quite literally, you drive up to it, you hold this up to the window, and hopefully if we keep going forward, there we go, green light and through we go. And this just makes life magically easy. So anybody ever doing a road trip ever through France needs to have one of these telepayage devices. Um, and then you're basically out on the road and away you go. So that's super easy. And I'm gonna store that back in the, uh, in the armrest there. Um, but yeah, it is very, very comfortable and cruisy in here. Um, this is you know, what a GT car's all about. Um, I will report back obviously significantly more when we have driven the car a bit. Um, I think Ben's doing all right, kind of like forcing him to be on camera while driving. Can't complain. <laughs> You'll manage. Um, the person who would be complaining is if there was somebody back here. So California is kind of a two plus two. It has back seats and you can probably squeeze somebody who doesn't have much by way of leg room back there. There's not really any room. But um, if you put the seats forwards a bit, they would just about get in. Or if you put the roof down, they could find a way of perching. But we've got about two hours from here to where we're going for our first stop today. We'll take some pictures with the car because it's gonna stay clean because the sky and the weather is on our side um, at the uh, famous Reims Go race circuit, the old French uh, Formula One track from way back on race circuit, uh, where I stopped a few times before. And I actually stopped on a previous adventure when I came down. The day I picked up my Cayman GT4 and I drove through France, we stopped there. Um, so that's going to be quite nice to see again and uh, get some nice shots. So it's pretty much motorway all the way from here to there. Here we are then in this fairly legendary place. I think it's now the third time I've stopped off here. The first was when we came down with the 650S and the M4 on Where's Schmi, um, which was nearly a year ago now. And then towards the end of the year last year, we came down with the French flag with Paul and Sam with the uh, GT4, LP560 and the F-Type R. So it's quite crazy with the cars flying by, but the location, um, if you've never seen it in my videos before, is just insane. So it's brilliant for photo shoots. This completely sort of deserted old fashioned grandstand. And then on this side, you have the sort of pit lane all just exactly as it was. Fantastic place to stop off, take some photos and just hear occasional nice cars blasting through as well. Um, and take it all in. It's uh, a lovely day as well. I mean, it's absolutely freezing. You can't tell that, but like, look at the sky in this direction. Um, very menacing and cool. So we're just taking some photos with the cars, chilling a little, well, with the cars, I should say, with the car, um, with the Cali T. And uh, yeah, just taking it all in before we set off for the leg back towards the hotel. Maybe just drive by a little bit, hear the engine sound, um, and then get on the road on our way. Not 
exactly what I expected. I mean, it's a, it's a Gallardo. I couldn't tell you what exactly, but it's got a big wing on the back and race car plastic windows, and it's all a bit crazy. That was kind of cool. Makes the journey a little bit more exciting, I suppose. We've arrived at our destination for the night then. First sort of full day down and first video down with the Ferrari California T. And we've got a decent amount of luggage that we've actually had in the back of the car and there's some more stuff we haven't got out. So it's basically already proving itself as a pretty good GT car and we haven't even had the roof down yet. I'm hoping tomorrow driving around the mountains, a little bit of mountains, we might have some sunshine and we'll give it a go. We'll probably have to put a couple of our things on the back seat though so that we can actually fold the roof into the boot. Um, but I will show you through all of that because tomorrow I'll also talk a lot more about the car, the spec um, and sort of more about it, how it drives and that kind of thing. But for a very gentle day, like today, just driving, chilling, enjoying, making some progress, getting through France. It's done a pretty nice job, um, so who are we to complain? And it looks pretty cool, and it's still very clean and tidy, and that's one of the important things as well. If you're wondering about the number plate, V8, of course, we have a V8 engine in the car. FNE stands for Ferrari North Europe, so they have a thing with that on lots of their cars. But it looks good. It's been a good day. Uh, I'm not going to lie, pretty tired. Um, after yesterday, of course, with the launch event, to kind of wrap these two days into one video. But we're on the road to Geneva. The motor show is ahead of us and I'm looking forward to it a lot. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you stay tuned to for tomorrow because we're going to find some nice roads, get some good shots of this car, and I'll let you know a lot more about it. That's it for now, though. I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers. OK, so here we go. P1 time. Got the lift system up already. That's going to make it easy to get. If Porsche offered me a GT3 RS, I would not take a second to think about buying one. It Let's jump in.